I've often wondered what actually qualifies to be called a hundred year flood. Is it gallons per minute falling from the sky? Or maybe the distance a creek gets out of its banks? Or is it as simple as when a local old timer declares, this is the worst I've ever seen? I guess there's really no way of knowing, but one thing I do know is I've heard that saying on countless occasions my whole entire life, including this one. Technically, they can't all be 100 year floods, but one thing's certain, every living creature in the woods knew it was coming. No one had to tell them, they just knew and were on the move. And that, my friend, is a window of opportunity for a night hunter that's been said to only come around every hundred years or so, but I'm thinking it's more like two or three. Put him in here with his buddy. That is nuts. Dies with his leg in his mouth like that. I believe if somebody shot me in the chest and I was still alive, I'd be trying to bite something <laughs> too. People that are just light guys are just thermal guys, man. If you put the two together, it's so much more effective. There's no telling if we hadn't had the thermal in this coyote, how much further he would have gotten into the field. We've got rain coming. That's one thing that we've experienced a bunch. If you either have a front or you got a big rain system, those three or four hours before it really hits, man, stuff's usually on its feet. This never gets old. In the day, or rather the night that it does. Chris, right, 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 here we go. I don't know what I'll do with myself. <laughs> This is what it's all about, hunting and doing what we love, trying to bring stuff for you guys at home to enjoy. And this is the fruits of our labor. Enough of the sweet talk. Let's go do this again. <laughs> I've been asked a few times, when's my favorite time to go hunt? Well, my usual response is either whenever I get a chance or right before it rains. I've been playing this game for almost 30 years now in our area, and I've seen many changes within the sport that has led to what night hunting has become today. But there is one thing that has remained consistent that can only be explained by the fact that there is a God. And that's an animal's ability to know when weather is on its way. It's always been something that intrigued me how they never have to be told something's coming, yet they somehow all know when it's time to move. As for us, we just watch the barometer. Whenever it's on the move, so are we. Wind's definitely shifted. I think that front's about got here. Larry's been, he's been having problems with this one coyote. He said he's been hanging out around his cows the last three or four weeks. Almost every time he goes and checks them, he's always in there with them. We're about to find out if he's in there or not. He's probably got about 50 cows up there. There he is right there. He ain't paying us no mind. Yeah, he, he don't have a care in the world. Let's try to see if we can get him to come to a call. I bet you a hundred bucks that's him. This coyote was only a hundred yards or so from the truck, so we figured why not slide up in the rig and give him a try. I wouldn't really even call this a stand. It was more like see a coyote, kill a coyote. We were just at the right place at the right time. Unfortunately, his sniffer was working real good in this rain, and the second he gets downwind, the gig was up.
I laid him out. Dude, for a bonus, that's good. I'll take a free one anytime I can get it. That may have been the coyote that Larry's telling us about that's been hanging around his cows, but he usually has his cows down here in this other pasture, and that's where we want to hit. So we're going to leave this coyote where he's at. We'll come back and pick him up in a little bit. We don't want to make any more noise than we have to. So we're just going to give it just a minute as we're making our way back there, be real quiet, getting out of the truck. And we're going to see if we can't get something to come from, from where we want to call. So, I mean, I'll take a free one, but... That's where I want to be. So let's go see if we can't make it happen. This rain, we've got rain coming. That's one thing that we've experienced a bunch in our area. If you either have a front or you got a big rain system or even snow, snow or ice, and it's on the way, those three or four hours before it really hits, man, stuff, stuff usually on its feet. Just in the last 30 minutes, we've seen three or four different animals. Glad he doesn't have this planted this year. We moved only a couple hundred yards and just rolled the dice that one would still respond to the Fox Pro. One thing that's abundantly clear is when the conditions are right and they're already on their feet, getting them to come to a call is a much easier sell than making one get up and come your way. Right here, Jared, right here. I don't know what it is. Better get him right there, Jared. This night was shaping up to be one of those nights we all long for as a night hunter. And frankly, I wasn't surprised at all. When you consistently and intentionally plan your hunts during those hours leading up to a major storm system, when the barometer is going crazy, you will eventually see a pattern once you've done it long enough. And this wasn't our first rodeo. Oh, Larry's gonna be happy. <laughs> Absolutely he will. You know, that ain't a very old coyote, but that's a big coyote for, for the age. Yeah. You can tell by his teeth that he's not just super old. I no. bet he's a couple years old anyway. Another pretty sucker. Look at the dark streaks he's got right through here. I mean, we can sit here and look at this thing all day long, but this is the second one we've called up in like 10 minutes. I say we book it. Let's go make another one. We need to go get that other one. Yeah. I bet he's probably stiff as a board by now. <laughs> hey, this is the benefit of waiting. Let's go get them. This rodeo had just begun and the rain was getting stronger. It was time for us to cash in. Told you we'd come back for you. I'm with night crew team member Matt Charsky, taking advantage of yet another storm system headed our way. Matt and I have become real good friends over the past few years hunting together, in just about every type of hunting situation you can think of. And one thing we both agree on is hunting before or during the beginning of just about any type of weather change. Even a simple shift in the wind can have an effect on an animal's behavior. They should be moving. 
Been cold and windy the last two days. Gotta be moving tonight. Right here, man. Right, right in the trees. Right, right there. No, more to your right. More to your right. Got him? I got him. It's been said in humans, all behavior, both good and bad, is caused. But to take that theory a step further, I believe the same concept can be applied to animals as well. Something inside them causes them to move at almost the exact same time. It's not a coincidence. It's something that occurs biologically within their makeup, like an alarm telling them, you need to go eat. Now obviously there are some theories you'll never definitively be able to prove or disprove. Ready. I just want to know how they all have the same trait. How is it possible a wild animal knows a weather change is about to happen hours before it actually happens? That was a little too easy, Matt. Nice. Man, 30, 45 seconds, you can't beat that. If that, oh my man. Oh goodness. If that. Man, when I first picked him up on the thermal, he had to been 40, 50 yards back there. Yeah, I never saw him until you pointed him out. Yeah. If I'd have been swinging, I don't think I'd have caught those eyes. He was pretty deep in there. Yeah, people that are just light guys or just thermal guys, man, if you put the two together, it's so much more effective. Because there's no telling, if, if we hadn't had the thermal in this coyote, how much further he would have gotten into the field before we would have known he was there, you know? He could have come in the edge of the field and we wouldn't have had a light on him, seen the truck and took off. You never know, but bottom line is he uh, he didn't make it. I'm gonna turn these lights on right here so we can go over and pick him up. Look like a pretty good coyote too. Every now and then there are unique things that happen on our hunts that will oftentimes end up being the way we actually remember a specific coyote or bobcat. And after walking up on this coyote, we both had to take a second look. 35 yards. Excellent. It looks like a pretty good coyote. <laughs> look at this, Chris. Oh my gosh. <laughs> look at him. I don't know if I've ever had one do that. Holy moly. I've never seen one like that, man. That is crazy. He dies with his leg in his mouth like that. I believe if somebody shot me in the chest and I was still alive, I'd be trying to bite something <laughs> <Yes>. too. <laughs> oh, weird. Something stung him. Gotta get a shot of this. We are just normal guys out having a good time. And when something crazy happens, why not enjoy the moment? Matt had to literally pry this coyote's mouth open to get his leg out. That is so cool. Look at that. <laughs> don't see that every day. You really don't, man. You know, that's what I love about this sport, man. Every time you come out, it's something different. Yep. These coyotes are so unpredictable, so crazy. You never know what they're going to do. See that little point right there, man? If we just came around it, about where that blue dot is, man, I think that'd be a good spot to call. I think it'd get a little bit closer to the water. I know it feeds down into a bottom there. I think it's worth a shot. We are leaving a blank stand, headed to make another call, only a few hundred yards away. That's something the majority of predator hunters out there will tell you not to do, because the sound travels further than you think. Well, they are right to some degree, but from our experience specifically targeting bobcats in rolling terrain around creeks, the theory or rule of having to move a mile between stands goes right out the window. It just goes to show not every rule applies to every situation, because this time we only moved over one draw and look who shows up. Now some will just say he was already coming from the previous stand, but had not shown himself yet. Maybe so, maybe not. All I know is we've had this happen multiple times with cats, and have concluded for ourselves, we either weren't close enough the first time for them to hear it, or the direction of the sound simply changed. Bottom line is, either way, we have a nice cat headed to the truck.
the cats in our area are not typically known for coming in slow and sneaking in like you would think a cat would. Most of them will usually come in pretty fast, usually throwing caution to the wind, but every now and then we will have one that'll put on a sneak and play hard to get. We had worked this cat for several minutes to within 40 yards or so from the truck in this tall grass, but every time he stopped, there was always something in the way. It was like he knew the exact spot to stop where Matt couldn't take a shot. We worked on him so long we had actually reached the point we were going to intentionally spook him just to make him move. And right about then, he gets up on his own and finally gives us a better look. From the camera's perspective here, he looks to be in the open, but from Matt's angle, there was still all kinds of brush in the way. All this cat had to do was move over a few inches and Matt was going to try and thread the needle. One tiny blade of grass is all it would take for this cat to make it on the blooper reel for the season. So we decided to be patient yet again and wait him out for the perfect shot. He wasn't going nowhere, so why get in a hurry now? Say the word, man. <laughs> Good shot, man. I cannot believe we did that. That was awesome. What a great experience on a great cat with a great friend. I'll tell you what, it's fun sometimes when you finally get one that'll actually act like a cat. Boy, he did too, man. He didn't know what he wanted to do. Should I stay? Should I go? And we can't be, dude, we can't be 250, 300 yards from where we were just calling. And I think even from where he came, he's equal distance, you know? He's half halfway in the middle there. I bet as a crow flies, it ain't 300 yards from where we just called for 25 not. minutes. I bet it's not. Because in the thermal, I could still see the cows coming in and out <laughs> of those trees from where we were. That's just amazing. You just never know. You never know, man. That's a good cat. Yeah, great cat. And really pretty. For us, this cat serves as a reminder to exactly why we hunt every chance we get, and especially when rain or snow is headed our way. It's those times when someone flips the switch, the fish start biting, the critters start hunting, and some of the best night crew memories are made. If nothing else, just getting to see animals of all kinds out doing what they were born to do is worth the trip. They all have an extra built-in sense we simply don't have. It's not something they have to learn. They just have it. And as a night hunter, that sense has become my new best friend. Drive 300 yards and there he is. You see, although we as humans can't predict the future, we can count on an animal's inherent, uncanny ability to predict the weather. 
So don't be surprised if it's a little wet the next time you wake up after a great night's hunt. I can assure you, the two go hand in hand, and it's no coincidence. I just say, don't complain. Let it rain.